Good morning, Tony Dottino here doing a live with Tony. I am the founder of the USA Memory Championship and uh, when the year turns, we'll be getting prepped for our 25th USA Memory competition. And we're planning to host a qualifying event in July and the final um, here at Full Sail University in September. So stay in touch with our USA Memory Championship website and you'll stay on top of it. But today, by the way, happy holiday to everyone. Uh, I, as I think of this week, uh, I have to remind myself of the day of the week. Uh, Christmas came and went on Monday and now we're getting prepped for New Year's this weekend for New Year's Eve on Sunday and New Year's Day on Monday and lots of football and basketball and NFL and NBA, uh, so it's, a, it's been a quick week and I had to remind myself that today was Friday and it's time to do a, a Monday, Wednesday, Friday Tony Live with Tony. And today's session is on five key nutrients. Again, I just love this uh, newsletter. It's put out by Massachusetts General Hospital and it's titled Mind, Mood and Memory. And I'm now looking at the January issue. It's January 2024, right around the corner. And uh, I found it very interesting that people know we have balanced diets and fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and lean proteins for optimal brain health. So how often do we think about uh, the foods we eat, the foods we, eat. we talk about our exercise a lot, but now the foods we eat and their key uh, impacts on our mental health. And so uh, the director of nutritional psychiatry at Massachusetts General uh, suggest five different nutrients that are critical in the foods we eat. And I'm going to quickly go through some of these. It's a great article and it really gets you to stop to think about what you're eating. Uh, one of the things we need is folate. It's known as vitamin B9. I, this is a new one for me. I hadn't thought much about this. Uh, it's used for cell development throughout your whole body. Obviously, cell development is important for your brain. Deficiency interferes with synthesis and repairs cellular function in the brain. So where do you get your folate? Folate, folate, F-O-L-A-T-E. Leafy greens, so hopefully you're eating your leafy green uh, salads and vegetables that uh, we have. Legumes, uh, asparagus, I love asparagus, so I do eat that. Green peas, love peas, so that's a good one. Uh, organ meats and Brussels sprouts, so I feel pretty good about these. These are things that I do eat on a regular basis but didn't realize I was getting my folate from them. That's vitamin B9 and how it impacts my cell repair in my brain. So that's a good one. Uh, I'm, I'm in good shape on that and I, hopefully you're eating your leafy greens and asparagus and uh, peas and Brussels sprouts. Uh, organ meats is an interesting one that's added on. The second one that he recommends that uh, I think we've all heard about and, and now we can step back and think about it is omega-3 fatty acids and we keep hearing about omega-3 fatty acids because of its impact on our heart health and our cardio functions. Well, guess what? Omega-3 fatty acids are critical. I've read studies where people that have taken a lot of their fats out of their diet had uh, pattern interrupts in their brain uh, functions and so reintroducing the right fatty acids uh, made a difference in their mental capacity. So a fascinating study I read a number of years ago. Well, here it is, omega-3 fatty acids. They're the essential acids that you need to obtain through food because your body does not produce any. They are crucial for cardiovascular and cerebral health. The lack of uh, acids in a diet is detrimental to your cognitive function. And I've seen a number of studies on, on that uh, as well as what the doc is saying here in the uh, newsletter. Now, where do you want to eat your fat, get your fatty acids? Well, sardines, I do enjoy sardines. I get them in the can and, uh, and use them as snack foods when I'm trying to uh, avoid eating sugars and things of that sort. Uh, salmon, we, we certainly have heard about salmon and different kinds of salmon, though I do see the price of uh, salmon going up and we are doing farm-raised salmon, so are those good or not? Mackerel. I don't eat the mackerel. I don't know where I would go find mackerel uh, to it. Uh, herring, I do eat the herring. I get those in the jar at the uh, grocery store. Oysters. I'm not an oyster person, but oysters are certainly uh, a food that he recommends. Walnuts. I used to eat lots of walnuts, but I've 
diverticulitis has got me a little bit nervous about eating nuts. Avocados, love avocado. Love if you're having an avocado dip, though. What are you having with it? And uh, extra virgin olive oil. So uh, olive oil in our cooking is certainly something that's very very helpful. So that takes us through omega three fatty acids. Now the third one, and this is back and forth. Vitamin D. Uh, what what are we doing? Vitamin D being challenged as well. It's the cure all for everything. Well, the doc here says vitamin D is a soluble vitamin known as it's uh, uh, for its calcium absorption and bone growth. Uh, in the brain, vitamin D is a neurosteroid and plays a role in protecting against depression and anxiety. Wow, vitamin D in the brain. I th that's a big. That's a leap for me, but studies have demonstrated that vitamin D decreases inflammation and toxic destruction of cells and controls the release of nerve growth factors, which is essential for the hippocampus, which is where we get our storing of memory. A lot of our mental athletes have gone through now MRIs and we're doing some studies and the difference in the hippocampus and the cortical uh, the functions. Those are our thinking functions, left, right brain. Deficiency plays a crucial role in regulating how we respond to stress. I, I would be fascinated to understand the studies that uh, the doc from the Massachusetts General has done with this one. Uh, vitamin D has just been ruled out as the, the natural curator for all illness and diseases and everything else, but uh, I am a vitamin D person. I do focus on it. I do pay, pay attention, but uh, God... To, this, that's more for my cardio, so here's, he brings this back for brain health. Now, where do you naturally get it? Well, we're back to herring again. Egg yolks. So eggs, been in the news, good and bad cholesterol. I, I do eat eggs at least twice a week, herring again. Mushrooms. I, I do have, I love mushrooms, and so that's a good one. We're back to oysters and salmon, sardines, shrimp. Well, where have we read that shrimp is not good for, for, for some of the cardio things? Well, shrimp is now showing up in this report. Uh, and canned tuna fish. I love tuna. I hadn't thought about canned tuna fish. I used to eat more of it, and maybe I need to go back and get it. But those are our natural uh, derivatives of vitamin D. And, of course, just go out in the sun, supposedly. Uh, it would get you enough You get out to the sun, but then you've got to be careful of skin cancer. So... Vitamin D. So what do we got? With folate, omega-3 fatty acids, vitamin D. Number four, we take for a whole lot of other reasons, is vitamin C. Vitamin C is a proper brain functioning. It's vital for the biosynthesis of the neurotransmitters. That, that, those are the connections, the neural connections that we're making in our brain. And vitamin C is crucial uh, for the neurotransmitters and an antioxidant. Right? As we learn more and more during our sleeping hours, we get that deep sleep, uh, antioxidants, uh, cleaning out the toxins, right? We're cleaning out toxins in our brain, which just naturally come about us through the air and the foods that we eat. Its deficiency is associated with fatigue. So who would ever stop to think if you're tired? Uh, my God, let me look at my vitamin C uh, numbers and stuff. Moods, anxiety, and lack of focus and memory and also sleep disturbance. I, and the studies that bring some of this together are just fascinating to me, I and mean, it's just so powerful. You can find vitamin C now where? Cherries, during, during summer and Christmas time here, I'm able to get uh, lots of Bing cherries, I love them, I buy them by the pounds and eat them, probably men too many, but uh, God, I love uh, cherries. Broccoli, here we go, back to Brussels sprouts, chili peppers, kale, Kiwis, lemons, oranges, papaya, strawberries, and sweet yellow peppers. So here are some recommendations for vitamin C. Again, a good list of things that you can think about next time you're doing grocery shopping. And number five is zinc. It's an essential mineral that uh, builds cellular metabolism. And so uh, zinc's a new one for me. It's a Interesting thing, study suggests the association with low levels of zinc uh, puts you at a risk of depression again. So here, what's interesting about this is the nutrients that are impacting your mental functions, not just in memory and cognitive function, but anxiety, depression, and some of the other things that cause us to be concerned. So where do we get zinc in a natural way of eating? A shellfish, 
Now we heard, what do we hear about shellfish in the past? Beans, I, I do enjoy beans. Uh, I, I like the black beans. Uh, I get those in my, uh, my burritos when I go for Mexican Tex. Uh, you get zinc in your meats, nuts, poultry, chicken, fish, whole grains, eggs, and uh, grass-fed milk, dairy products. So there's where you can pick up your zinc. So there's your five, folate, omega-3, vitamin D, vitamin C, and zinc. A, a well-written article, and really I, I found very powerful. Now, two things you can do without, I think you've probably heard all, all over and over, is added sugar. Added sugars include uh, snack foods, canned soups, not good, store-bought salad dressing, ketchup, pasta sauces. They impact the hippocampus and have negative impacts on our overall thinking. So research shows that long-term overconsumption of sugar, uh, especially in youths, has a neurocognitive deficit as they go into childhood. So added sugars and just one more reason to watch the amount of sugar that you're putting in. And then we've heard this again over and over is ultra processed foods. Uh, a lot of our cold cuts, you know, and people that are eating their hero sandwiches and popping in cold cuts. Processed foods are uh, the meats, cheeses, uh, and they have a risk of adding to dementia. So processed foods that are taking out the nutrients, and I've read a number of things of, of, of what happens when we process food and, and take out all of the good nutrients. And it, this suggested that alcohol is considered a processed food and a toxin, which goes against some of the readings that we've been doing about the importance of maybe a glass of red wine or two and the benefits that it has. So there is my uh, Live with Tony, uh, will be my last one for the year 2023. As I thought about it, and I said, wow, 2023, this is it. It's Friday, it's December 29th. The weekend is the 30th, 31st, and I'm back uh, here. I may be back on Monday or certainly by next Wednesday. Depends on what I'm doing or not doing on Monday, but in any case, uh, this is my wrap-up for another year of Live with Tony, and I hope uh, my audience is getting uh, benefits from it. I always love when I get some of the notes back uh, that tell me about the, the likes and the comments and people that then find it and go to our USA Memory Championship website. And making a difference in people's lives as it relates to mental health is what... Uh, the memory uh, enterprises is all about and the work that uh, uh, my team does around mental fitness and enhancing memory. So have a happy new year to you and we'll see you in the new year 2024.